Morning everybody! <clears throat> Excuse me. Hi, I'm absolutely thrilled to be here with you all this morning. Awfully sorry that I'm here and not there with you. Um, but unfortunately, or fortunately for my son, he has a really big rugby game today um, in front of some um, academy coaches and England coaches. So I really, really want to be there to support him. So like I said, I'm absolutely thrilled to be here to do this training for you. Emma contacted me a few days ago and asked me if I would train with you all today, which I'm absolutely thrilled to do. Um, she kind of left the uh, content of the training very, very open, um, said that I could pick what I wanted to do. So what I wanted to do for you all was something that was very close to my heart and something that I feel very passionately about regarding our Arbonne businesses. And that is... Um, I want to talk about how to build an authentic business. Um, something that is it's kind of driven by being, in the title of the training, a go-giver, not a go-getter. Okay, so over my time in Arbonne, I've been really lucky to attend a number of fabulous training events. Um, at each event, I fill my um, notebooks with notes, and I um, come back with loads and loads of ideas. Very rarely do I go back to those notebooks and reflect on them. However, before writing this training, I did go back and have a good look at a couple of books that I had. And what I found was that I had some amazing stuff in there. So my first recommendation, my first tip of my training is, go back and reread your training notes. You will find gems in there, things that you'd forgotten about that are really, really good for you. Um, what was I going to say? So flicking through, I came across, across this activity and this really set me going on my theme of what we should be doing for this training. So um, what we were asked to do at the training was write down the numbers of one to five. So I'm asking you to write down the numbers one to five in a list. And then next to each number, what I want you to write is a word describing the core values or um, the key characteristics that you want to come across about your business, how you want your business to be presented to the world. So what is your Arbonne brand? Five words, they should come quite quickly. Don't think about it too long, too hard. They should be really key core values to you as a person. <clears throat> So my core values when I did this activity then, and actually even looking back at it now, I would say they're more or less the same. My core values, the first one was that I wanted my business to um, be genuine, uh, to be authentic. Um, and, you know, th that's driven by that desire to actually be the real deal, really. And the second one was that I wanted my business to present with a level of humility. Um, <clears throat> I, I think um, I'm a pretty humble person. I often kind of put down what I can and can't do very easily um, and, and, and kind of belittle my, my skills. But I think humility is great because I think um, it's something that we're able to value in other people and kind of look at other people and think, you know, they're finding that hard. I found that not so tricky. <clears throat> but everybody's at a different point on a different journey and we all bring different things, which is the great notion of building an Arbonne team where everybody brings something different to the um, situation. The third um, core value that I had about my business was that I wanted my business to be fun and I think fun is really hard to avoid actually in Arbonne. You know fun is the key thing so I want to be, do and have fun things. Um, the fourth uh, quality that I wanted in my business was to be inspiring, and I think that goes with humility. I wanted to be able to appear, um, <clears throat> to look, I suppose, to some people like, oh my gosh, if Sharon Hodgson can do it, anybody can do it. Gosh, yeah, look. Um, so I, I, I kind of want to inspire people in terms of the experiences I've had, the journeys I've had, and it helps people along the way too. And then the fifth value that I wanted to bring to my business was balance. And I certainly think that's something that I will continue to strive to build is balance. I am a little bit black or white, all or nothing. Um, and I lead a little bit, rather than black and white, maybe 50 shades of grey. Who would say no to a bit of Jamie Dornan on a Sunday morning? So when I looked at those core values, um, what I look, when I looked more deeply, actually the majority of what I um, strive to do in my business is actually to give, I want to be a giver. 
So, which brings me very nicely to the book, The Go-Giver by Bob Berg and John David Mann. Um, and which is a modern day parable for the business person, um, a little bit of an Aesop's fable, talking through the story of Joe, who's a business go-getter, a salesman who wants to be the top salesman in this company, um, trying to find out actually how to do it and how to be that person. Um, and so he's in search of this guru guy who he thinks is going to have all of the answers. Um, he thinks it's a chap called Pindar, also known as the chairman, who has all the answers. But actually, this guy is actually being fed by a rather unassuming, mature person in the background. And that's where he learnt all of his business savvy from. So it's a really good book. I would really recommend you go read it. But the five things that really came out of that book are the five laws of stratospheric success for business. I would recommend that these are the five laws of stratospheric success for life. And actually, if we had these as values that we kind of built towards as people, I really do think that it's going to make a big difference to everything that happens to you. So the first law that comes out of um, The Go-Giver is the law of value. The law of value. And in this law, um, what it is telling us is that your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. So if we think about our teams, if we think about our preferred clients, and if we think about our clients, how much more do we offer them than we get paid by coaching them or providing a service to them? And I think we've always got to give more in order to receive in the future. Okay, the second law is the law of compensation. The law of compensation. Your income is determined by how many people you serve and how well you serve them. And again, this is great. This goes right back to those preferred clients, to our consultants and making sure that we provide a service. So what we get from that is what we get in payment is based on how well we serve people. So again, you know, Joanne Coates' call on Monday evening about um, building up great preferred client network is based on providing a service to your preferred clients. Okay, the third law is the law of influence. And your influence is determined by how abundantly you place other people's interests first. And I think that's a, a really key point. Um, I am guilty, as I'm sure many of you are, of meeting people and thinking, wow, they'd be a great consultant for me. Or, wow, that you know, um, wow, she'll put a great big order on. Um, and, we, and we sometimes look and view people as QV or income or uh, another person to tick us off towards um, a, a manager bonus. Um, but really what we need to be looking at is actually about what we can give people from their perspective, so from their interest. So, you know, thinking about actually what gift can I give that person? Is it the gift of some phenomenal products which will help with their skin? Is it the gift of helping them build a business, helping them build a social life? So it's actually thinking from other people's interests, not from our own, not thinking about what can I get from this? It's about what can I give from this situation? The fourth law is the law of authenticity. That's the law of authenticity. And this is the most valuable gift you have to offer anybody. And it's yourself. Don't be anybody else. Um, I remember when I first started Arbonne, hearing about fake it till you make it. And I think that's, that's a great recommendation in terms of fake the belief <laughs> until you have it. Fake the excitement, fake that, well, you shouldn't have to fake the excitement, but fake the confidence, but don't fake yourself, you know, because when people think you're being fake, they don't buy into you. So be yourself because that, that is the best gift you can give anybody. And then the fifth law is the law of receptivity. This is the law I need to polish because um, I'm not good at this one. Um, the key to the law of receptivity is to, um, the, the key to effective giving so being a giver, uh, the key to being an effective giver is to stay open to receiving, okay? And I think a lot of us find that hard. A lot of us find it tricky to, to give unconditionally. That's, that's okay. We can give. 
but actually sometimes when it comes back to getting, I certainly feel uncomfortable when people give me things. So it's like, well, I should be really grateful, but I actually feel very uncomfortable. So, you know, out of those five laws, we all have to probably work on at least one of them to build up this whole notion of being a go-giver. And I think if we're a go-giver, we will automatically receive, you know, it, it is, it's a universal law. So that's kind of the end of me talking about the go-giver and how to build a giving business, the sort of things you need to work on. But just to kind of sum up, before um, I wrote this training, I was having a look actually at um, the core values and the core beliefs of businesses. And what I found was a company, I won't mention their name, um, that have a very beautiful way of putting across their core values. And I thought, actually, do you know what? This almost, it was like, gosh, wow, this is, this is almost my core values. So what they had is if you draw a Venn diagram, so kind of three circles, one at the top, two at the bottom. Um, the first circle at the top um, is generosity. Um, and that is doing through sharing. So actually, if you think about our, our barn, that's what we are. We're generous people. We, we do, we build business through sharing. The circle at the bottom left-hand side is um, freedom. And we do what we love. And again, that's our bond, you know? I do what I love. I love helping people. I love sharing things with people. So it's like, wow, yeah. Then the circle at the bottom right-hand side is creative energy. And here we love what we do. And it's like, well, yeah, you know, you wouldn't be striving forward if you didn't love what you do. And then that intersection in the middle, the bit where the three circles join together, requires two elements. Sorry, I didn't mean to swear there. Two elements. One, consistency. And that's we do what we say. Um, how many times have we said things to us upline, to our sponsors and said, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this QV. I'm going to do this. Um, and then we, we kind of don't do it. So be consistent. Do what you say you're going to do. And then the second factor is transparency. And it's we say what we do. So we actually tell people what we're doing as well and being honest about it. So I, there's a little cl a video of that, not a video, a picture of that. So what I'll do is I'll upload that into the Facebook group uh, for you later this afternoon. So I just wanted to say... Be a go-giver, not a go-getter. Look at business about what you can give to people rather than what you can get from people. Um, and by looking at it that way, I know your businesses will grow. Have a super, super area training. And I look forward to seeing you all very, very soon. Love and hugs. Bye.